Welcome everyone to my final video of 2018. I said I would have all my final videos done by Christmas Eve Eve Sunday, and I met that goal, but not without difficulty. My internet is still crapped out as I'm filming this. My He-Man video has not been posted yet uh, as a result, and I'm filming this one just to have it in the can. Um, my backup plan, um, I'm headed over to my parents' house later today. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to post the videos while I'm there. All right, so I met my goal. Uh, not without some delays, but I did meet my goal, and I'm all done for 2018. So mazel tov, hooray to me, and um, yeah, I will see you guys in 2019. Um, I also have a bunch of stuff on my plate right now with uh, finalizing my condo. We close uh, next week. So that's really exciting and getting ready for the holidays and various other things. It's just a real stressful time, but uh, it's also really good because it's all good things that are happening. Um, and uh, yeah, man, Whew, I'm exhausted. So if I sound like a rambling fool in this video, it's because I'm tired as shit. And I'm also kind of pissed off at Comcast's um, customer service. They really let me down today. I scheduled a call back and then they call me with some automated message telling me that they can't help me. I'm like, well, what was the point of me scheduling the call back just for you to call me back and tell me you can't help me? It's like, the fuck is that? Anyway, uh, yeah. So in this video, I will be talking about the best and the worst of 2018 for professional wrestling. Um, in doing so, I will have seven categories for the worst of wrestling and seven categories for the best of pro wrestling. And when I think of 2018, um, I remember it as a good year for uh, wrestling material that I watched, mainly because I raged quit on WWE. I stopped watching Raw and SmackDown every week. It was like backlash happened and I was like, nope. I'm out of here. I'm done. And I think I've been a happier wrestling fan for it. And just focus on the things that I like, whether it be NXT or New Japan or Ring of Honor or even Impact Wrestling at times this year uh, flirted with competence. And got Lucha Underground Season 4. You got Cody and the Bucks doing their thing. And uh, even watching old stuff like the Saturday Night's main events and the Clash of the Champions, that was more fulfilling than watching Raw or SmackDown. So, um... Overall, it was a good year for me as a wrestling fan because I focused on the things that I liked. When you don't force yourself to watch something that makes you miserable, good things happen. And that's how I feel about 2018 as a wrestling fan. And hopefully we get some uh, good stuff in 2019. Hopefully WWE gets better, although it's going to take a lot for me to get back into the habit of watching Raw and SmackDown every week. Um, also, a reminder, if you have not voted yet, you can vote on... What WrestleMania matches you want me to watch, live stream, react to, and review uh, heading into WrestleMania season? The link is in the description down below. Um, all I ask is that you be nice. I haven't checked the results yet, but I just ask, please don't be horrible, guys. I put some awful matches on those lists. Please don't be awful to me, please. <laughs> Pretty please. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I can't wait to see what y'all did. But the cutoff point for that will be February 1st, 2019. Um, also, uh, talking about like my current status and everything, with the condo, uh, that's going to be a change of setting. Um, so one day I'm going to be filming a video and you'll just see me in a new place. But I don't know when exactly that's going to happen. I don't know what kind of delays are going to happen because I still have another month left on my lease. So I'm going to slowly move over there over the course of a month. And uh, hopefully that takes some of the stress off. But I think, uh, uh, I think I should be good. I don't think it will cause too many delays. But I uh, just wanted to bring you guys up to speed and make sure you were all cool. But time to knock this out. It's time uh, I've earned my holiday break for making videos, my annual gift to myself. So let's just go ahead and get this done. Um, the worst of pro wrestling, let's cover the negative first. We've got seven categories and we're going to start with worst tag team of the year, which is actually a tie. I'm giving it to DX and the Brothers of Destruction, mainly because I was annoyed that they were building a major angle around these four guys, Shawn Michaels, Triple H, Undertaker, Taker and Kane, and it's 2018. I'm like, what in the fuck is going on that these two guys or these two teams need to, you know, be 
brought out and dusted off uh, for a major main event of a major show. Now, granted, I didn't watch that show. I didn't watch that match, although I did see plenty of clips that indicated the quality of uh, such an encounter. But I, to me, it just reeked of desperation from the WWE, and I it, it made me feel like the decision I made to stop watching Raw and SmackDown was a very good one. Um, this was just sad and pathetic, and... Ugh. Uh, and again, I didn't even watch the match, and I feel that way, so I can't imagine what um, people who actually sat through the match that were actually thinking. But yeah, this was a, a terrible endeavor, um, and it's sad because there really weren't any other options for worst team. I couldn't think of any off the top of my head. It's like these two teams being put together 21 years after the point of their relevance just, uh, oh God, it was irritating. So, so bad. Uh, next up is Worst Female Performer of the Year, which I gave to Nia Jax. Very easy pick. Um, I know it's kind of easy to pick on her given that she broke Becky Lynch's face, but there's more to it than that. I thought there was inconsistency with her character where she started off the year as this big bully. Then they decided, no, she's the bullied one and gets made fun of for being fat. And then she went right back to being a bully. So it's like her whole character arc just got thrown out the window. So that was annoying. But then when you pile on top of it that she broke Becky Lynch's face, it's like, wow, you, wh why do you get attention? What's, <laughs> you know? I mean, granted, Becky came out of that even more over than she was before, but um, I don't believe in rewarding somebody for fucking up either. So, Nia Jax, easy pick for worst female performer of the year. Worst male performer of the year, I'm going to give it to Brock Lesnar. I mean, is it any more clear that Brock Lesnar just straight up does not give a shit anymore? Outside of his match with Daniel Bryan... Um, Every match I saw him in this year, he just looked lazy and like he didn't give a shit. Like his matches with Roman, his match with, uh, apparently his match with Strowman at Crown Jewel was fucking awful. I didn't see it, but it's just, I cannot muster the energy to care about Brock Lesnar anymore. And he didn't do much to make me care. And uh, the fact that he's Universal Champion again just makes me appreciate my decision to stop watching Raw. <laughs> I just, I don't care about Lesnar anymore. And it's a shame that, that we're in the boat that we're in with him. Worst feud of the year. I'm going to give that building off what I said about Brock Lesnar. This one's going to go to Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns, a feud that we thought was going to end at WrestleMania, but they just wouldn't let Roman go over Lesnar right away. It's like, oh my God, no. They're going to keep this going. And we knew it's like this feud can't end until Roman goes over. And... It wasn't that like, oh, we want the baby face to finally get the win. I wanted Roman to finally get the win just to put a nail in this thing and get us the fuck out of Dodge because I just could not stand their matches. Their Mania match was awful. Their cage match in Saudi Arabia was awful, but ended in controversy. I'm like, Jesus Christ, we're going to we're gonna keep getting these matches. And then their match at SummerSlam was terrible, but thankfully brief. Um, it was a series of matches and a feud that I that just pounded me into submission, and I just could not stand to watch it anymore. And I got beat down to a point where I was like, can we just let Roman win the belt so we can move on from this shit? Please and thank you. Good God. Worst promotion of the year. Um, I'm going to give it to Monday Night Raw, which has apparently gotten so bad that WWE is even referencing how bad the show is on the show itself, which is kind of hilarious. I like the meta-ness there. But, uh, yeah, people keep messaging me every week saying that Raw is like the shits and it's like the worst it's ever been. It was bad when I stopped watching and decided to just uh, let the show go and just uh, stop uh, letting WWE own my Monday nights. And uh, yeah, the show's terrible. There was almost nothing redeeming about it when I stopped and apparently it's gotten worse. So that's where we are right now with Monday Night Raw. The flagship show of professional wrestling is just an unbearable, overly long mess. Worst special event slash pay-per-view of the year. I'm going to give it to Backlash 2018 because that was the show that made me quit. I know uh, people said Crown Jewel was really bad, but again, I didn't see it, so I can't say. From what I saw, Backlash was such an awful show. When I saw that main event and saw what was going on, I was like, you know what? I'm done. I'm done with main roster WWE. I can't do this anymore. And uh, I, I think I made a good decision. But Backlash, it's so funny that this was the show that finally made me go, nope, I'm done. Bye. <laughs> so for that, it has to get worst show of the year for me. 
Worst match of the year. I'm going to give it to the main event of Backlash 2018. Again, I know that Crown Jewel, everyone said, was terrible, and the main event of that show was supposedly uh, a fucking train wreck, but um, I never saw any of that. But I did see Roman Reigns versus Samoa Joe, which was so bad. And when I saw the audience basically walking out on the match, I was like, this was a clear indicator that WWE was just completely out of touch with its audience. And I'm not trying to shit on Roman Reigns. I'm not trying to shit on Samoa Joe. It was just, um, I, I think when you take into account how long the damn show was and how like uninterested people were in Roman Reigns winning the title or anything that would set him up to win the title, it was just, you could sense everybody's frustration. When everybody started leaving, it was like, oh my God in heaven. This is what, um, this is what, it's come to, and when I saw the audience walk, I was like, you know what? I can walk away too, and I haven't looked back. So that is that. So uh, that concludes my worst of awards for the year. Uh, I think it was all WWE, was it not? Yeah, all WWE. Again, I'm not trying to be a dick, but they <laughs> they made it easy for me. What can I say? But now we're going to get into the positives. We're going to talk about the best of the year for 2018, which has got me a lot more excited, and I definitely want to talk about all of this. Best tag team of the year. I had plenty of options here. You have O'Reilly and Roderick Strong for the Undisputed Era, who had outstanding matches with Mustache Mountain and... Um, Oni, uh, what I keep fucking up his name, Danny Burch and One Lorcan. Uh, I hope I got that right. And the Authors of Pain and uh, various matches uh, that the Undisputed Era had with all of those teams. All really good stuff. And, um, you know, they really kind of carried NXT's tag team division. I still hate the name Undisputed Era, but they were a great team regardless. Um, in, on main roster WWE, I think the two best teams pretty much by default are The Bar and The Usos. Uh, and they typically do fairly well whenever I watch them, rarely. Um, in Impact Wrestling, I think he had some really good teams with this new incarnation of LAX, Santana and Ortiz. Uh, and that was shown th uh, through their matches with the old version of LAX, Homicide and Hernandez. And you also had the Lucha Brothers, who are outstanding together. Pentagon and Phoenix made for um, an excellent tag team for Impact Wrestling. And we're actually going to get to see the new LAX versus the Lucha Brothers on T uh, TNA slash Impact's first show of 2019. So here's hoping that match delivers. Uh, and then you look into Ring of Honor. You've got SCU and the Briscoes and how great they are. Um, so many great tag teams that I could have gone with this year. But I'm going to give it to the same team I gave it to last year, the Young Bucks. And I think what set Matt and Nick apart from everybody else is the entrepreneurial spirit that those two show by promoting their own event all in and uh, basically just being marketing geniuses to put themselves over as the greatest tag team attraction in wrestling today. Um, when you look at WWE, tag teams are typically undercard or midcard filler at best, and the Young Bucks feel like a main event everywhere they go. So they are the best tag team attraction in the business, and I think that deserves a lot of credit. And, you know, you also had Matt uh, selling a back injury for the entirety of the year, and their matches were really good. So uh, they're in ring work was good, and outside of the ring, they were great as well. So the Young Bucks deserve a lot of credit, and I'm happy to give it to them. Best Female Performer of the Year. Well, I referenced the person who broke her face, so I'm going to give it to Becky Lynch. There are a few runner-ups as well. I think Ronda Rousey has actually been one of the best things in WWE this year. Uh, me rage quitting had nothing to do with her. I think she's done really well. I think Charlotte Flair, with her recent heel turn, kind of got over the... Roman Reigns for the women's division hump that she was on. Um, and I think Tessa Blanchard is great. A bit of a hidden gem for those of you that don't watch Impact Wrestling. I think she's outstanding and had great matches with Allie and Talia Valk Valkyrie and has been uh, one of the shining stars of Impact Wrestling. But Becky Lynch is the most organically over thing in WWE right now. Not just female performer, just entity. She is the most over entity uh, among the fan base right now. Even people that hate WWE talk about how great Becky Lynch is and how she's carved like a Stone Cold Steve Austin type of personality for herself. And I think there are some big things coming for her in 2019. If she wasn't penciled in for uh, the rumored women's main event at WrestleMania next year, I think she's going to get it. Um, whether they make it a three-way with Ronda and Charlotte or they just give her a match with Ronda straight up one-on-one. -on -one, um, 
I think there's a lot, a lot to look forward to with Becky Lynch. And for a company that um, doesn't offer a whole heck of a lot of good things, it is nice to see Becky Lynch generate some excitement among the fan base. And here's hoping for bigger and better things for her in 2019 because she deserves it. Next up, Male Performer of the Year, and I had a lot, a lot of options here too when you look at Cody and what he's able to do, been able to do as a self-promoter, very much like the Young Bucks and his uh, feuds and matches this year. Um, Pentagon Jr., who was great in Lucha Underground and in Impact Wrestling and everywhere else he goes. Kazuchika Okada delivering some of the best matches this year. Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa in their series of matches in NXT and their feud, which was great. And even on main roster WWE, you had the return turn of Daniel Bryan and his ultimate heel turn and AJ Styles being the longest reigning champion of the year. But um, if I had to pick a best male performer of the year, I'm going to give it to the best bout machine, Kenny Omega. And it started with his amazing feud with Chris Jericho, who's another runner up. I think Jericho, uh, the stuff he's been able to do in 2018 is nothing short of amazing. But uh, Kenny Omega with his feud with Jericho, his feud with Cody, um, his rise to ultimately win the IWGP championship from Kazuchika Okada and everything else in between. The reunion with Cody Ibushi and the return of the Golden Lovers and their work with the Young Bucks. Um, Kenny Omega has been involved in a ton of great stuff this year and has proven himself to be a huge attraction outside of the WWE and one of my favorite guys to watch and I was so happy to see him win the title that um, uh, yeah it was an easy pick for number one of 2018 for me I think I think Kenny Omega has done amazingly well and deserves all the credit next up I've got best feud of the year uh, this was another one I had a few options with. Uh, I referenced the Omega Cody feud heading into WrestleMania weekend and uh, uh, ultimately culminating at the G1 special in San Francisco. And I thought uh, that feud was amazing. Uh, I referenced Omega and Jericho, which I thought about giving it to that, even though it technically kind of wrapped up very early at Wrestle Kingdom. Uh, I thought their feud was great. Uh, Sammy Callahan and Pentagon and Impact Wrestling was the best thing that Impact Wrestling did all year, uh, easily and culminating culminated very well at Slammiversary. And then if you look at Lucha Underground Season 4, you had Mundo versus Matanza, which was a wacky feud, but one that I really enjoyed. And the Mac versus Mil Moritz was also a great feud and one of the best, uh, best of the season. But my best feud of the year is going to go to an NXT feud. I'm giving it to Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa, a feud that was a year in the making, giving us an, an exciting encounter at WrestleMania weekend and delivering um, just a perfect friends turned enemy story that ultimately developed an even Johnny Gargano turning heel. Um, they did a few matches this year, and it got to a point where it was like diminishing returns, but the Gargano heel turn made the character development that went along with their later matches feel worth it. So uh, the Gargano and Champa, I thought they easily had the best feud of the year, and they got some future developments out of it as well. So great stuff all around there. Next up is best promotion of the year, and I talked about how in 2018 I focused on the things that made me happy, and I had plenty of wrestling shows that I enjoyed. When you look at Ring of Honor and NXT, uh, Lucha Underground, even though I'd say season four is their weakest season to date, uh, I'd say Lucha Underground once again delivered, but I'm going to give best promotion to New Japan Pro Wrestling, who delivered big shows, big stories, and big matches all year long. They deserve a ton of credit for what they accomplished, and I'm definitely looking forward to see what they deliver on in 2019, especially as we get closer to WrestleMania. And now finally, we're going to close out this video with two top 10 lists. Yes, two top 10s constituting my top 10 video for the month and my final one of the year. So let's go into my top 10 favorite shows of the year, top 10 favorite special events slash pay-per-views. Got a couple runner-ups here. Uh, you got NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4, ROH Best in the World 2018, which I attended, ROH Super Card of Honor 2018, which was their WrestleMania weekend show, and even on main roster. WWE, I'm going to give some credit to WWE Royal Rumble, which was their best Royal Rumble event in years, and WWE Evolution, their all-female pay-per-view, which was easily their best main roster show of the year, but not quite good enough to make the top 10. So here are my top 10 shows of the year. NXT TakeOver Chicago 2, which was headlined by the second encounter between Gargano and Ciampa, this time in a Chicago street fight. A uh, very good show, another example of TakeOver just being a great show, and the main event definitely made it worth it. 
Number nine, Ring of Honor Final Battle 2018, which was headlined by The Ladder War, Cody versus Lethal for the title, you got Bully versus Flip Gordon in an I Quit match, and various other things sprinkled throughout the card. Just a well put together show and a great final show for Ring of Honor of 2018. Um, it was the second to last pay per view event I watched this year, and a very good one, and uh, left a good taste in my mouth for Ring of Honor and for wrestling in general as we close out this year. Number eight, the New Japan G1 special in San Francisco, which was headlined by Cody versus Omega for the IWGP title. Excellent match, but what really put the show over the top for me was its ending as the Gorillas of Destiny made their intentions known as they turned against Kenny Omega, Cody Rhodes, and the Young Bucks and, uh, and initiated the Bullet Club split, which would carry storylines heading through the G1 Climax tournament. It was a shocking and amazing ending, and probably my favorite pay-per-view ending of the year. And uh, It was a shocking angle, and very exciting and definitely made the show more memorable. Number seven, NXT TakeOver Philadelphia, the first TakeOver special of the year. This was headlined with a huge double main event as Adam Cole took on Aleister Black in an Extreme Rules match, and Johnny Gargano faced Andrade Cien Almas for the NXT title in an excellent main event match. Um, those two matches right there were enough to put the show over the top for me, but um, as usual, TakeOver delivered big, and they delivered very early in the year. Number six, New Japan Dominion 2018. This was headlined uh, with a big double main event as well. Chris Jericho versus Tetsuya Naito for the IC title. And the huge main event of Kenny Omega versus Okada, where Omega finally won the IWGP championship. Dominion tends to be a great show. I've joked that it's basically uh, the show that replaced SummerSlam for me. And this year was no exception. I thought it was an excellent event and definitely worth it when you get into the main event matches. Number five, Impact made the list. Yay! Good job, Impact. Impact Wrestling Slammiversary, which is a show that I recommend to people that are craving hardcore wrestling. With WWE's PG um, and dedication to that, the violence typically isn't ramped up on WWE. So Impact went ahead and put on this amazingly hardcore and violent show, uh, which was best exemplified through the Pentagon Sammy Callahan match, which was one of the wildest and most violent matches I've seen in years. Uh, there were a few other really good matches on there as well, like LAX versus the OGs and Austin Aries versus Moose for the title in the main event. Um, it was easily Impact Wrestling's best pay-per-view in years. Uh, like, oh my God, this show was actually very, very good. And I was happy to see them deliver something this good. Uh, it goes to show that even Impact Wrestling flirts with confidence once in a while. I thought this show was amazing and they deserve a lot of credit for it. Number four is going to go to All In, the most unique pay-per-view event of the year, promoted by Cody Rhodes and the Bucks. This show definitely exemplified the entrepreneurial spirit of, you know, do-it-yourselfness that those three guys um, have brought to the table. And it also exemplified the excitement of independent wrestling and everything non-WWE. Uh, there were a lot of fun things on here, like Flip versus Lethal for the ROH title, Okada versus Skrull, Omega versus Pentagon, um, and Cody Rhodes winning the NWA title from Nick Aldis. Um, it didn't go off without a hitch. I know the ending to the women's match was kind of botched and the main event was clearly rushed. But the show itself was so much fun and so exciting from start to finish that I couldn't help but enjoy it. And I, you know, huge congratulations for Cody and the Bucks for pulling it off as well as they did. Number three, Ultima Lucha Quattro Parts 1 and 2, the season finale to Lucha Underground. I mentioned that season four was probably their weakest season to date, but Ultima Lucha once again delivered with some amazing matches. Um, you had Killshot versus Son of Havoc in the hair versus hair match. You had Johnny Mundo versus Matanza in probably the wackiest match in the Lucha Underground history. You had Jake Strong winning the title in the closing sequence. You had Mil Moritz versus The Mac, and you had an amazingly violent match between Pentagon and Marty the Moth for the title. Um, and you also had the closing cinematic, which set the stage very well for a season five that I hope we get. And it just goes to show that Ultima Lucha, man, it comes through once again in Lucha Underground. They really know how to deliver the goods come this time of year when it's time to do their big season finale. Uh, this one was another home run for them, and here's hoping we get more from them next year. Number two, NXT TakeOver New Orleans, the WrestleMania weekend show. It started off with a six-way ladder match to crown the first ever North American champion and just didn't let up as we got a huge three-way tag for both the tag titles 
and the Dusty Rhodes Classic uh, Trophy. And this is the match where Roderick Strong turned heel and joined up with the Undisputed Era. We also got Aleister Black winning the NXT title from Andrade Cien Almas. And the real classic from this show was Tommaso Ciampa versus Johnny Gargano over a year in the making in an unsanctioned fight. An amazingly dramatic and well-told wrestling story that delivered everything I wanted it to and definitely stole WrestleMania weekend. Excellent, excellent match and one of the best matches of the year. But my number one favorite show of 2018 was the very first major event of the year, the January 4th Tokyo Dome show, Wrestle Kingdom 12, an event that I described as the wrestling equivalent to Netflix binging as every match, except for the IC title match between Tanahashi and Jay White, every match was great. Like every match just hit it out of the park and just made me want to keep watching more. When you look at the killer four-way for the junior heavyweight title, when you look at Kota Ibushi versus Cody Rhodes, when you look at Goto versus Suzuki in the hair versus hair match, you look at Okada versus Naito in the main event, which I think would have been better had Naito won the title, but as is, it's still a great main event. But the real star attraction of this show was Alpha versus Omega, Chris Jericho versus Kenny Omega for the IWGP US title. Excellent, excellent match. It was the match that was most hyped heading into the show and it delivered tenfold and made the, it really put this show over the top. And it was an excellent show before that, but um, that match really put it over the top and I didn't, there wasn't another wrestling show this year I enjoyed more than this. This show was amazing and an easy pick for best of the year. And here's hoping Wrestle Kingdom 13 delivers something similar. And now we are going to close out with my top 10 favorite matches of the year. This was actually a very hard list to make, but I've got it down to 10. Let's just go right into it. Number 10, Kazuchika Okada versus Tetsuya Naito for the IWGP World Heavyweight title, the main event to Wrestle Kingdom 12. Like I said, this would have been better had Naito won the title, but as is, it's another great example of the type of matches that Okada is capable of having. And uh, another great notch on his belt as he built up his legendary championship reign that would come to an end in 2018, but not at this event, but I thought this match was great. Number nine, Kodi Ibushi versus Hiroshi Tanahashi in the G1 Climax Final. Excellent, excellent match. It set up Tanahashi to win and ultimately get the title shot against Kenny Omega at the Dome, but I thought this match was amazing, great stuff, and really capped off an amazing year for Kota Ibushi, who had a huge resurgence following his uh, reunion with Kenny Omega and the series of matches that he got as a result of that. Um, I thought Ibushi and Tanahashi had an amazing match, and uh, hopefully there are bigger and better things for Ibushi heading into 2019. Number eight, Kazuchika Okada versus Hiroshi Tanahashi for the IWGP World Heavyweight title from Wrestling Dontaku, night two. Um, these two have always had amazing matches together, and I'm amazed that they were ha able to have such a great match. At this point, you would think by now I, we would have seen them do everything, but... The stakes were a little bit different here. Not only was the title on the line, but also Tanahashi's defense record was on the line. And once um, Okada won this match, he also pulled ahead in the series and officially put himself ahead of Hiroshi Tanahashi. So there were a lot of stuff at stake beyond the title, and Okada got the win. It was another outstanding match where they were able to deliver. Don't know how they keep doing it, but they do. And uh, these two just have magical chemistry with each other, and this match definitely exemplified that. Number seven, Andrade Cien Almas versus Johnny Gargano for the NXT title from NXT TakeOver Philadelphia. Outstanding main event match. Uh, Andrade Cien Almas is like low-key one of the best NXT champions of all time. I know he's not like somebody that you instantly think of when you think of great NXT champions, but I think uh, he did really well for himself. And I think Zelina Vega added a lot to his overall presentation. But I thought that this match that these two had were amazing. It was amazing and um, just an indicator of just how good Johnny Gargano was in 2018, that he had such great matches with Almas, he had great matches with Champa, and now he's through having like really good matches with Alistair Black as well. I mean, Gargano has been amazing all year. Uh, number six, Kenny Omega versus Pentagon Jr. from All In, my favorite match from that event, and the dream match I didn't know I wanted. Pentagon's been one of my favorite guys in Lucha Underground and in Impact Wrestling throughout this year, and Kenny Omega was my pick for best male performer of the year, but I never really thought about putting the two together. Well, apparently Cody and the Bucks did, so they put them together in this match, and it was awesome. Great, great match, easily the best thing about All In, and uh, like I said, it delivered the dream match I didn't know I wanted, so thank you for that. 
Number five, another Kenny Omega match. Kenny Omega versus Cody Rhodes from Supercard of Honor 12. This match kind of got overlooked and not everybody seemed to like it as much as I did. I was fully invested in it all the way through and uh, the ending in particular had me on the edge of my seat. So if you can get that kind of reaction out of me, I feel like you did something right. And I love the feud that these two had together. And um, I thought this match was one of the best matches of WrestleMania weekend, probably second only to uh, the main event of the NXT special um, that happened uh, the next night, so uh, which I'll get to that in a little bit. But I thought Kenny and Cody, uh, great feud, had a couple of great matches. Their rematch a few months later was really good as well. But I really enjoyed this match. It was one of my favorites of the year. Number four, Pentagon Jr. versus Sammy Callahan in a mask versus hair match from Impact Wrestling Slammiversary 2018. Easily Impact's best match of the year and probably the best match they've had in a long time. I thought I'd seen it all in hardcore wrestling, but this match made me cringe with some of the nasty things that they were doing to each other. This was a wild violent and intense brawl and both guys really brought it and delivered something that was truly special so if you like hardcore wrestling definitely check this match out I thought it was an amazing amazing match Number three, Johnny Gargano versus Tommaso Ciampa in an unsanctioned fight from NXT TakeOver New Orleans. This would probably be higher on the list if we got color, but man, that was the one thing missing. This match really needed color. But like I said, it was one of the best told wrestling stories of the year. It was very dramatic. Had me emotionally invested all the way through. You had a great heel and a great hero, and you wanted to see the babyface overcome him and get his revenge. So, uh... Excellently told wrestling story, loved just about every minute of it, and uh, both these guys should pat themselves on the back because they paid off over a year's worth of build-up very, very well. Number two... Kenny Omega versus Chris Jericho for the IWGP US title. Alpha versus Omega at Wrestle Kingdom 12. This was uh, the star attraction of this event, and it delivered beyond any expectation that I had for it. The match was amazing. Um, both guys did really, really well for themselves, and I think this was the match that kind of convinced everyone if they weren't going to put the title on Omega before, they kind of had to after this match was over. It's like, all right, we got to set him up to win the IWGP title. I mean, I think they would have done it anyway, but this match really raised Omega's stock as a huge attraction and uh, set him up quite well for his big victory later in the year, uh, which is my number one favorite match of the year. My favorite match, Kazuchika Okada versus Kenny Omega for the IWGP world title in a no time limit two out of three falls match for the belt. Um, this happened at New Japan Dominion 2018. And boy, oh boy, uh, this is the perfect match to have. If you watch the series of matches that these two had um, in 2017, both at, you know, their Wrestle Kingdom match and their Dominion match that ended in the time limit draw, um, the stage was set for a huge encounter. And I think giving them two out of three falls and no time limit um, was appropriate for the series of matches that these two had together. And once again, they delivered an absolutely outstanding world championship match and my personal favorite match of the year. And it was made even better by the fact that the legendary world title reign of Okada came to an end as he lost the belt to Kenny Omega, paying off all the matches they had had previously up to this point. So uh, when I think of wrestling's best of 2018, immediately, at least from an in-ring perspective, my brain immediately goes to Okada versus Omega. I thought this match was outstanding and easily my favorite match of the year. So that concludes this video. I am done talking about wrestling and He-Man and Godzilla and Star Wars and everything else in, in 2018. I need, I'm going to take my break, going to take some time to refresh myself, and I'll be back better than ever in 2019. Thank you all for watching and thank you all for uh, liking and supporting my videos throughout the year. I definitely appreciate it. I had a lot of fun this year especially with the live stream series I did with uh, Clash of the Champions and Saturday Night's main event uh, and doing my Kaiju movie reviews and all the other projects that I did this year. I had a lot of fun doing it and thank you all for supporting me and your comments and uh, giving me all the kind uh, well wishes and everything else this year. It's greatly appreciated. And like I said, if you haven't voted yet, go ahead and vote for what WrestleMania matches you want me to live stream next year. You got until February 1st, so there's still plenty of time, but the link is in the description. So so check that out. But with all of that, I am done here. I am done with 2018. So thank you.
thank you all once again. I hope you all have a great holiday season. You all have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I will see you all in 2019. So take care and I will see you all later.